Welcome back to Facing South Florida. We continue our conversation with Jeff Green, who is running to be the Democratic nominee for governor. I want to get to education, but a quick question. Uh, reading your bio, I noted that you, you wrote that your mother was a religious school teacher. Yes. What, how religious are you, and, oh. and what did you learn from your mother? Well, my mother was a Hebrew school teacher, and what I learned, the one thing I learned from my Jewish upbringing is probably tikkun olam, it means repair the world. As a young child, that was a value system that was instilled in my, by, by my parents and in, in our family, is that, that, that you have an obligation to make a difference in the world, whatever it may be. If you have just a few pennies, you should, you should give, if you have a few pennies, give one of them to charity. And if you have an enormous amount of wealth like I have, you know, try to make as big a difference as you can. That, that, that's what motivates me. And you committed to the giving fund sort of by Bill giving Melinda pledge. The giving pledge mm -hmm. like Bill and Melinda Gates, you pledge what? Is it half year? Yeah, you, but, but that is, you agree, you're, you're pledging that during your lifetime or after you die, you will give more than half of your, your net worth to philanthropy. And it's been, they've been, very, they've been very inspiring people. I have to tell you, Jim, I mean, that's really what motivates me in a lot of ways, even in this governor's race. Because, you know, we have meetings once a year. You get together with, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates. You know, these, 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 these they didn't have to do this. They've just left Microsoft at its peak. And they've, they've eradicated polio from the planet. Malaria is almost gone from the planet. You know, they've done amazing things in education. Well, let's talk about education. Yeah, let's sure. pick up on that. So you created a school called the Green School. Why did you create that school? Well, my, I have three young boys. They're now four, six, and eight, and a couple of years ago, they were all two years younger. And we were we were in a we were private schools. The public schools in, in our area just aren't up to stuff. I mean, I went to public schools all the way through high school. I had a great public school education, but they just were not what we expected. But don't so, you live in, but isn't the school that you would have sent your children to, I understand, it's an A-rated school. Well, you know, you may be A-rated, but it's not at the level of the schools that I felt children in Florida deserve and my own children deserve. So we decided, let's go out and start a private school. We, know we didn't take a penny of government money. We don't even take donor money. There were wealthy kids, parents, and we say, you know what, we want the educators only focusing on doing innovative education for these children. So what would you do for public education if you're governor? Well, it's, it's easy because, you know, right now, according to U.S. News and World Report, Florida public schools are 40 in the country, and I believe that number. And I think that there are examples. The state of New Jersey was 36 in the country, and now it's two. And I'll tell you what they did, just a few things, because I've spent time with the consultant that was front and center in New Jersey. And uh, basically what they did is they have two years of pre-K for every three and four-year-old child, because, you know, what happens, every, it, it, almost everyone's talking about it now, it's going to become more of a buzzword of a brain development among young kids. But I mean, this is when it all happens, prenatal to eight years old. So how do you pay for it, though? Well, it's, it's not, you know, first of all, that happens to be a seven to one return by almost every study because, you know, let's face it, if you want to build a university building, like a big chemistry building at a university, it may cost you $100 million. How much better are the kids going to learn chemistry? So, but how do you pay okay. for this? So, you know, it's, it's about, we think it's about a billion dollars, okay? Just if we end the vouchers that are going to charter schools, the schools without rules, that alone is a billion dollars. But I'll tell you something else. Rick Scott added to his budget this year called Executive Office of the Governor. It went from four hundred million to a billion four. That was there for, to give out corporate welfare to get businesses to come here. One thing that I just want to point out, because uh, the billion dollars that you're talking about that goes to charter schools, if all if you end that and close those charter schools essentially, and all those kids go into public schools, you know it costs more to educate them in public schools because I think they I think the charter schools get around five thousand dollars or so per student when they go to charter schools and when because it's a big talking point for the Republicans and when they go to traditional public schools it's closer to seven or eight thousand. So all those kids, three hundred thousand kids that you want to move in the public school system are going to cost each of them two three thousand dollars more to educate. Well, look, there's no question in my mind that we have to fix the public schools first. 86% of our kids but, are in public schools. But what schools. I'm saying is your plan actually costs more money. It doesn't well, save. Well, let me explain. Look, at right now, if you listen to a statistic on what percentage of our gross state product is, product is spent on public education, we are 38th in the country. That means we have a trillion dollar economy, 15th largest in the world. We're 38th in what percentage of that we're spending in education. So all we have to do is change the priorities. And we have to- So what do you cut? So all right, so let's talk about priorities. So you're not saying raising taxes. You don't want to raise taxes. No. So what, what currently does the state do that you don't want it to do? Well, the corporate welfare. I mean, Rick Scott has spent a lot of money, you know, by trying to bring businesses here. You don't have to do that if you have world-class world -class schools. Because look, the first thing somebody asks when they're thinking of moving a business to Florida is, what are the schools? Like. So they Google Florida public schools and they see U.S. News and Report 40 in the country. You're going to pay teachers more money? 
Well, we have to figure out to teach, pay teachers more money because the problem is it's not only more money though. What they did in New Jersey, in addition to more money, the kid, the teachers have more time to collaborate with one another. They get advanced education. We need our teachers to be able to. In our, in our school, every child starting kindergarten learns coding, computer science, how to use a 3D printer. You, a kid, a teacher is not going to know that by, by uh, who's been teaching 30 years. So we need to have to have the ability for these teachers to get up, get their skills updated. So and it's treating treating teachers like professionals. So how much, so I, you know, I'm trying to figure out the math because the numbers are always hard here. You know, the amount of money that's spent on trying to induce businesses to come into the state, that's not going to be enough to pay for what you're talking about. Well, I think two years of pre-K we can get, we can, we can find that for sure. Now, if you're talking about giving all the teachers raises, I mean, it's got to take time. We're not going to give everybody a raise, just like the minimum wage. I'd like to see that at $15, but it's not going to, we're not going to go from eight twenty five to 15 the first day we're in office. It'll, that'll take some time. All right, let's, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about potential conflicts of interest for you and your investments. One thing I want to clear up, I've heard from several people that you talk to folks when you talk about this race and how much you're spending, that, that you say that, that every three days you make a million dollars in interest. Said, I've never no, said that. No, that's not true. Is, I, that, is it I, even close to being true? I had never even thought of it. Never thought of it. Never thought of that that way. Okay. So in the meantime, you know, I, I looked at your financial disclosure right. forms. It's about $3.3 billion according to last year. That's what you wrote down. Um, you list assets and, and income, and you have prime primary sources and secondary sources. The secondary sources, you are required to list not just the, the sources, but the amount of income. Right. Your disclosure forms have no numbers next to them for the secondary sources of income. I have no idea, the public has no idea how much you own in ExxonMobil, how much you own in Hess, enterprise products, all these sorts of things. Will you amend your form and, and add the numbers to it? Because right now they're not there. If it's required, we'll amend it. We had we had our account to do it. We did it. They filled it out. We signed it. We're not trying to hide anything. Let me tell you something. The day I get into office, if there's any possible conflict with anything I own, we'll sell it. So well, because like one of the companies that you claim to have a business interest in is Apache Corporation. They are the fracking giants. Okay. You know, so of course. So, so, I, so, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I probably have one one hundredth of, of uh, one hundredth of one percent of my net worth in that. I, it's a few few thousand shares. It's I, I remember because I see it on the statement. We will sell that in any energy stock the day I become governor because we don't want any possible thaw, hint of a conflict. You well, Paul, what's your position on fracking in Florida? Definitely against fracking. Offshore oil drilling. Definitely against offshore drilling. Okay. If you are the nominee, vehemently against it. If you're the nominee. Um, not asking you to do it now, but if you're the nominee going into November, will you release your tax returns? Absolutely. You will? Yeah, sure. Okay. There's, not, there's, not, there's nothing secret. Oh, look, what, we, what I own mostly is a bunch of income properties in a, portfo a diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds. And if there's any kind of conflict with something that would happen by, by being governor of Florida, I'll just sell. I'll probably sell all my stocks. Will you just create a blind trust or some sort of trust? You know, I, you know, I don't even know what the purpose of that is. I'd probably just sell all my stocks and just put it in an S&P index. But, Warren but, Buffett says that's the best thing to buy anyway. But one and of the there's no conflict. One of the potential conflicts is you're not going to be able to sell all your land. No. And, so, and the policies that you can set as governor, either through Department of Environmental Protection and others, could have an impact on the value exactly. of your land. I, I questioned Gwen Graham about the potential conflicts that poses. How do you handle those conflicts? It's a very good question. Look, if I own an apartment building, which I do, I own some apartment buildings, I would be absolutely certain that I had no knowledge of who the tenants are. Because you're right, what if somebody moves into the building and they say, well, the only reason I rented it was because I'm doing business with the state. Well, what so about land that could potentially be used to expand Brightline or rail services. You own a lot of land in Palm Beach that that goes along yeah. that trail line. If the rail line gets built in certain places, yeah. the value of your land Very increases. You know, Jim, all I can say is this. You know, we're giving most of our money away. I couldn't possibly spend even a fraction of the amount of wealth I've been lucky enough to accumulate. So, you know, whatever has to be done, we'll get the very best ethics the ethics person to come in and tell us exactly what to do. Because the last thing we need to have any, we need to focus on the problems facing ordinary fluidity. And so, I don't want this to this kind of thing to be a distraction. So we will do whatever is whatever is recommended, required, but to be beyond any kind of uh, question. Let's take one more break, and I want to come back talk about guns. I want to talk about the Everglades. I want to talk about green algae. More, I'll give you more than 10 seconds, which oh, is what that, the debate that's, that's, had the other day. Okay, 15 All seconds. Right, we'll, uh, more with Jeff Green when we come back.